Hello! wanted to set something straight that a lot of people have a lot of confusion about and that is sensors. I've mentioned this before but a lot of people don't get it and you don't read about it in any photography magazine and you don't uh, even see anybody mentioning this on YouTube. Uh, but the sensor matters for a whole lot less than you think and I'm not referring to size in this instance. I'm actually referring to the fact that for instance on the uh, on the Nikon D7100 Toshiba sensor, 24 megapixel, but that's only what it's sampled at. I believe that it can max out at 32 or 34 megapixels. Um, the reason for that in Canon and uh, Nikon and everybody else does the same thing is you have to make allowances for the buffering rate, uh, 80 converters and SNR firmware, and also what sort of cards you're going to be using in relation to continuous low or continuous high shooting. Um, the newest uh, Canon sensor, the 50 megapixel, 50.1 megapixel sensor, I believe maxes out at uh, 62 megapixels. Could be 61 megapixels, but the issue with that is, is that uh, to get the continuous high shooting to where customers is gonna, are going to dish out $3,000 for that Canon uh, DSLR, they want higher uh, frame rate uh, buffers uh, for shooting in continuous low and continuous high in action, sports, so on and so forth. I mean, you could actually, can and could, sample the sensor on its 50 megapixel sensor at 61 or 62 or whatever it maxes out at, but if the 80 converters and the SNR firmware that exist after the sensor and before it is shuttled off to the compact flash card or the SD card uh, can't handle that, then what you have ultimately is a, a, a extremely high megapixel camera that uh, has a lot of horrible negatives that are going to make the camera a complete dud. Um, for instance, uh, the Nikon D3 sensor is exactly the same one as found in the Nikon D700. However, there certainly is no question, I have a pair of both of them, that the D3 sensor has drastically different output than the Nikon D700. The D700 is very color saturated. It is not exquisitely great by any means in low light, whereas the D3 is. Uh, later iterations of the Nikon D3, um, the D3X and the D3S have uh, much better performance in low light than the Nikon D D3 does. But what you need to understand, and ultimately what the hell does this matter, because there's no firmware updates gonna, that's going to change this, but the 80 converters and the SNR firmware that exist after the sensor before the compact flash card or the SD card account for a tremendous amount of the output of the camera. So somebody talks about, well, Nikon uses Sony sensor. Well, who gives a shit? The secret sauce in every camera, whether it's an Nikon or a Canon or a Fuji, because this Fuji X-T10 has a Sony sensor in it, but the same sensor in a different camera, and I can't remember what other camera this was used in. It, it escapes my mind at this point in time. The secret sauce of the X-T10 is the SNR firmware algorithms that were written into this camera as well as the 80 converters and the sampling rate at which the gain is measured and you have signal to noise ratio and then you have uh, the SNR firmware that supply those algorithms so you actually have a slew of sauce that Nikon and Canon or nobody else is going to talk about but that's actually the most important part of the camera obviously it's a good thing to have a high quality sensor in there that uh, has high gain of its own uh, natural ability that be larger photo sites or smaller photo sites but it is going to be the case and this is an irreducible fact that all future cameras the sun is actually blinding me right now that all future cameras both from Canon and Nikon and everybody else are all going to be DX uh, pixel densities now, the reason for that is people talk about well the light gathering capability of a full frame sensor it has larger photo sites it has larger gain the same reason that uh, a half wave, a Yagi antenna has much better gain on picking up at a signal, a half wave antenna versus a quarter wave or one eighth wave. It's a much larger ass antenna. Well, the same thing that actually applies to radio astronomy, that people realized since about 30 years ago that, well, instead of building these gigantic bastard ass dishes like the Arecibo dish, for having the maximum amount of gain and doing radio astronomy, we can achieve the same thing by using a lot of smaller dishes in an array, but applying a, a firmware to that signal to reduce out the noise. There's actually certain frequencies, I forget what the frequencies are, frequencies that these noises exist at, and the 80 converters and specifically the SNR firmware algorithms that exist after the sensor but before it is written to the card is a secret sauce that Nikon and so they're all actually stealing from each other. 
The first thing Canon does to Nikon is tear their cameras apart, and the first thing that Canon, Nikon does to Canon is tear their cameras apart when something new comes out. And they backward, in, backwards engineer what sort of uh, new algorithms they're applying. And the Nikon D750 that I'm filming this on, it is the same sensor as the Nikon D610. What? Well, the D610 doesn't have anywhere near the low light capabilities of the Nikon D750, so what exactly changed? It's the same damn sensor. AD converter, specifically SNR firmware. See, this is the great way that companies like Nikon and Canon save a buttload of money. And so it takes a lot to re-engineer and recast all that line of equipment to spit out a new breed of sensors. So instead of doing that, all they have to do is sample it at a different rate. It's like sticking a limiter on a uh, on a motorcycle. I, I used to ride motorcycles and they'd actually put carburetor limiters and uh, on uh, the Yamahas because of California regulations and all this governmental bullshit. Well, all you had to do was take the carburetor off and either swap it out or drill a gigantic bastard hole in there to allow more air in and you'd have a totally different motorcycle, but you keep got the same damn engine. The exact same analogy applies to Nikon and Canon and Fuji and the rest of the people. What sort of sensors in the camera? What sort of damn sensor? Well, that's great and all, but what Nikon, Canon, and the rest of these people do, they save themselves a ton of money and they switch out these firmware and AD converters and they can make themselves a totally different performance camera, as is the case with the Nikon D750 as contrasted against the Nikon D610. Same sensor. So, well, there's nothing that you can do about this, obviously, so it's important to know that. So the next time you say, well, you know, Nikon's using some Sony sense, who gives a crap? It doesn't matter. Nikon has four different sources for sensors. Well, they got three now since Sony bought up Toshiba. But the sensor in it doesn't matter nearly as much as you think it does. Okay? And that's a hardcore fact. Take that in your pipe and smoke it.